Before we jump into complex numbers, okay, what I want to do is I want to give you a few equations. So let's look at, for example, x minus 2 equals 0. What would the solution to this equation be? x equals 2, perfect. Okay. So the solution would be x equals 2. Now if you think, okay, we give this type of number a special name. Does anybody know the name which we give to this number? Real numbers? It is, but more specifically? Okay, so, sorry? It's a natural number, perfect. Okay, so this thing here would be a natural number, okay, which we give that symbol there, that symbol there. So this just simply means that x, our solution, our number, is an element of, you notice it's like a backwards e, yeah, backwards e, um, or in fact a forward e, but it's kind of written weirdly, is a member of the natural numbers, and we use that kind of hollow symbol at the front, those two lines at the front, okay? So x is a member of the natural numbers, okay? So what are the natural numbers? Well, the natural numbers are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., etc., etc. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., 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 okay? These are sometimes called the counting numbers, okay? Because they're the numbers that we first use when we learn to count, okay? For example, there are four of us or five of us in this room, okay? I've got um, two hands. I've got, um, I don't know, the length from there to there is like some counting number. I've counted it in terms of centimetres. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like 12 pods in this room, right? So these are all examples of natural numbers or counting numbers. Called natural because they're the ones that come naturally to us, okay? They're the numbers that appear in nature first of all. For example, three elephants running towards me. Make sense? Well, zero is not natural. It's, natural. it's not, and I'm going to come to zero in a bit, okay? So if you like, I'm talking here about these things called sets, okay? Now a set is just a collection of objects, and in this case, the collection of objects are the positive whole integers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in a circle. So if I could care every single natural number, I'm going to put that together into a circle. Does that make sense? Okay, so every single possible natural number is there in that circle. Okay. But fairly obviously, there are other types of equations. For example, if I give you x plus 3 equals 0, okay, what would the solution of this equation be? x equals to minus 3. Good, x equals negative 3. Okay. Now, is negative 3 a natural number? No. Why not? Because we cannot count it, uh, basically. Yeah, it's not a counting number, right? What does negative 3 mean? Yeah, you can't have negative 3 pencils, right? That doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, in actual fact, does anybody know where the negative numbers came from? No. They came from the idea of debt. Okay, so debt means that you owe somebody something, okay? So for example, if you had five pounds, but you went out and bought an item which was worth eight pounds, it then means you had to use three pounds, which wasn't your money, okay? So you're in debt by three pounds, okay? So yeah, this would be, we basically extend this to mean the integers, okay? So we say x is an element of, and then we use z for integer. Z means zal, which is the German word for whole, okay? So the integers, would be all of the negative ones as well. Okay, so we're basically building up on our um, building up on our number lines: negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, etc., and also everything in that direction as well. Okay, you notice that zero is now part of the integers. Okay, it's now part of the integers. So this is a. I should write the names down. So this is natural numbers. This is integers. Okay. So if I was going to represent this on a set, okay, the set of uh, integers would also include the set of natural numbers as well. Does that make sense? Because every single natural number is also an integer, okay? But every single integer is not also a natural number. So if you like, if I was going to put all of the integers into a set, they'd be inside that circle, and you notice some of that circle, some of that set, is also the natural numbers as well. Okay? Make sense? Good. Okay, so let's look at other types of equations that we can have. Um, what about something like this? So 2x minus 1 equals 0. What would the solution to this equation be? x being of 1 over 2. Perfect. x equals a half. Okay. Now clearly, this is not a natural number, 
and this is not an integer. Does anybody know what type of number that is? Even number. It is, but be a bit more specific. Because it's not every single real number. We call it a rational number, okay? So we write it like this with a Q. The, Q. the Q, by the way, just stands for quotient, okay? A quotient is something which you get when you divide two numbers by each other, okay? So for example, four divided by one would be four, okay? The quotient would be four, okay? So this would be the rational numbers, okay? So if you like, with the rational numbers, you're now adding in more parts of this number line, okay? So you're adding in like the bits in between, but you're not adding in all of the bits in between, you're just adding in some of them. Yeah, over here as well. So does anybody know why we call it a rational number? Why half is a rational number? Because we cannot count them, but we rationalize them, right? You can count them, actually. You can count the rational numbers. I mean, uh, you can say, you know, I have like two apples, one and a half apple, but, you know, still, you, you, in order to uh, acknowledge that you need to rationalize it. Okay, the clue, the clue is kind of in the name, okay? It's got ratio baked in there. The name rational has got ratio baked in there. By the way, we call them the rational numbers. Um, have all of you heard of Pythagoras? Yeah. Yeah? So Pythagoras was a teacher in Greece. Uh, I can't remember when he was around, actually. I think it was like 400, it was either AD or BC. I can't remember which way around it was. But it was around a long time ago, okay? And he basically had a school in Greece where people would flock everywhere from all over the world to come and learn mathematics at this school, okay? And then they'd learn this mathematics and they'd go back into their sort of respective countries and teach other people this maths. And that's literally how mathematics used to spread, okay? It was like the Harvard of its day, right? The Pythagorean school. Um, and Pythagoras was kind of a bit of a, a bit of a philosopher. He kind of believed that mathematics made sense of the world uh, around us, okay? And he believed that numbers were beautiful, okay? Numbers made sense. Now, if I say that you're rational, what does that mean? It means you can't think logically. Yeah, it means you're thinking logically, it things you make sense, as opposed to irrational, which means you're being stupid, it doesn't make sense, right? So Pythagoras believed that all numbers were rational, all numbers made sense. Now, part of that is that all numbers could be written as a ratio, okay? Does anybody know what the word ratio means? Yeah. What does it mean? I mean, it's kind of a number that is come from you know, division. Absolutely. So it's what happens if you divide two numbers by each other. So Pythagoras literally believed, Pythagoras and his followers literally believed, that every single number could be written as a ratio of two integers. So for example, half, which of course you could write as 0 0.5, that would be rational because it can be written as a ratio of one and two or two and four, or three and six, or four and eight, or five and ten, etc., etc. Et but even then, two would be rational because we... Two would be what, sorry? Rational because yes. it can be a result of two over two, four over two. Absolutely, so two would also be rational, so even though up here it was a natural number, it would also be rational because you could write it as a ratio, for example, two and one, or four and two, yeah? Does that make sense? So all of these numbers up here, the natural numbers and the integers, they are also rational, because they can be written as a ratio of two other numbers. So in actual fact, the rational numbers again would include all of the numbers that have already come. Is that okay? Good, fantastic. So yeah, rational makes sense, but also rational. It means it can be written as a ratio of two integers, a division of two integers. Perfect. Okay, so we're starting to fill in more and more of this number line up here. Let me just get rid of that. Starting to fill in more and more of this number line up here. But have we got every single possible type of number yet? Have a think about this. What if I gave you the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0? What would the solution to this equation be? Irrational. I mean, sorry. So give me the solution, then we can discuss that. Two square, two, square root of 2, of course. Absolutely. So x would be equal to, if you add 2 to both sides, you get x squared equals 2, then you need to take the square root. So strictly speaking, it should be plus or minus 2, okay? Um, but in actual fact, I'm just going to consider just a positive version of root 2, because that's kind of what I want to go for there, okay? So it should be plus or minus 2. I'm just going to consider one of the solutions, which is positive root 2. Now, is this rational? No, it's not, okay? And this actually was quite famous, 
Okay? This was quite famous. A guy called Hippasus, he was a member of Pythagoras' school, um, he actually proved that this was irrational. Okay? It's a very, very simple proof. If you're interested, then please feel free to ask me at the end, and I'm more than happy to talk you through it. Okay? But it's quite a famous proof. Now, the trouble is, because this thing is irrational, it means it can't be written as a ratio of two integers, right? a division of two integers, then Pythagoras got worried. Pythagoras thought, well, hang on a minute. I've already said, I'm not trying to like sell mathematics to people by saying that mathematics was this thing that kind of made sense. It was rational. Numbers were beautiful, right? They were logical. But also part of that is that they can be written as a ratio of two numbers. If we now have numbers that can't be written as a ratio of two integers, we're stuck. We've got irrational numbers which means that numbers no longer are beautiful and they no longer make sense. And this is what he was genuinely worried about. So what he did is he knew Hippasus was kind of keen about this idea. He said, look what I've proved. I've broken all your thoughts. And he was really not happy. So one day they went out on a, um, on a fishing trip on the lake and Hippasus didn't come back. They pushed him over the side of the boat and they killed him because they were so worried about this idea that mathematics might not actually be rational anymore. There might be some irrationality to it. And they're worried that people would stop believing in mathematics. So people died for mathematics, right? And Hippasus was one of them. Um, so Pythagoras, by the way, really not a nice man. Really not a nice man if he kills people. Uh, okay, so this thing here is irrational. That wasn't true. Was complete true. joke. No, complete what? true. Complete true. They went out for a fishing trip and Hippasus didn't come back. Rational... They fell, if you like. Rather, rather, rather rational joking. man that he, this Pythagorean guy. Yeah, Pythagoras is a really horrible man. He actually kills for mathematics. He's a murderer. He should be held account for it. But instead, everybody loves him because he came up with Pythagoras' theorem. He didn't, actually. It was Euclid, so he stole that as well. But anyway, um, actually, yeah. Uh, so, x is equal to root 2. Not rational. So we need to kind of expand our definition. Okay? So here now we say that we've got the real numbers, okay? So this is kind of what you were getting at, Erdal, okay? So irrational numbers, okay, is not enough to cut it. That's just a small subset. What I want to do is draw another circle around it, which contains already all of the numbers that we've already had, okay? And obviously, if I just look at the irrational numbers, that doesn't include all of the rational numbers, fairly obviously, it'd be like a separate set, okay? So we say here that now we have real numbers, okay? Now, by the way, there are, other, there are some other real numbers as well. Um, so quite famously, uh, sorry, not x anymore, you could have like pi, yeah? Pi is 3.14159265353, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You can have e, which is like 2.718. We've met e before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, so these are all examples of real numbers. They are basically numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. They cannot be written as a ratio of two integers, okay? So real numbers also includes everything that we've had before as well. So the natural numbers would also be natural, would also be real. Integers, also real. Uh, rational numbers like half, three quarters, etc., would also be real. And then you've also got some extra ones as well. For example, pi, e, root 2, root 3, root 5. Yeah, things like that. Is that okay? Are there any questions so far? So Erdo, when you were saying, oh, this is real, I was like, well, yeah, you're not wrong because it's already in that circle, yeah. but be a bit more specific, yeah? Sure. So all of these numbers are also real, okay? Uh, just like these numbers are also rational, just like this number is also an integer, right? Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. So actually now, if we fill in our number line, what we've now got is every single number along this number line. That was not a very straight line, but we've kind of filled in all of those gaps now if we look at the real numbers, okay? But I think we can still go a little bit further, okay? 